Scotland, Ireland and Wales. By means of this poem, or it could be a sort of call and response book to this, I'm going to back up this statement with factual evidence. Country, not county. So if you feel like you want to play along, if you know some of the answers, I'm going to, what's England in French? What's Scotland in French? What's Wales in French? What's Ireland in French? Ireland. What's Cornwall in French? Why? What's Devon in French? Devon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could say it with a French accent. <laughs> so it makes you think, doesn't it? What's Cornwall in Spanish? Cornwallis. What's Devon in Spanish? Devon. Devon. What's Cornwall in Portuguese? Cornwallia. What's Devon in Portuguese? Devon. What's Cornwall in Italian? Cornwallia. What's Devon in Italian? Devon. Now, I don't want you to think I'm picking on Devon. What's Cornwall in Swedish? What's Yorkshire? What's Cornwall in Polish? 
Too much. I'm from Wales, I support independence. At one point I was a UK government lawyer and one of the lawyers who was responsible for the Government of Wales Act 1998 which established the Welsh the National Assembly for Wales as it then was now the, the Parliament. More recently I've been involved with a colleague from Swansea University, Alan Sandry, and we co-authored Right, okay. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so we, we we co-authored a prospective constitution for an independent Wales. Our reason for that was not to impose anything, but to inform discussion about potential ways forward. Okay? Yeah, okay, right. So that's a little bit about my background. Um, my purpose today of being here is to support you in your quest for self-determination, i.e. the people of Cornwall, so that you can better deal with the challenges that you face, whether they be social, economic, environmental or whatever. I, I don't presume to know what is best for you or indeed what you want, although I've got an idea uh, from what you've been saying today. But I know Wales and Curnow share a lot. Things like a common heritage, including culture and language, social and economic issues such as a lack of employment, lack of good quality jobs, lack of opportunity for advancement, lack of affordable housing, an ongoing brain drain, uh, to London, Manchester, wherever, Brussels, a lack of economic traction or leverage, environmental protection issues, and also particularly important, tied in with that, welfare of future generation concerns, because uh, it's about sustainable communities. Uh, outcome that you, you, you seek. Um, but Cornwall was incorporated into the UK state, or the English state as it then was, by not by consent, as Scotland was. Same goes with Wales, yet Wales has managed to establish its own um, devol devolution to an extent. So I, I would argue establishing 
recognition from the UK state that Kurno is a constituent nation of it because it would put it on a par with other UK nations. So despite the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty, that ridiculous notion that Parliament, legally speaking, could do whatever it wants, because of Scotland being recognised as a constituent nation of the United Kingdom, the UK government did consent to an independence referendum in 2014. So it, it did accept sovereignty rested with the people. So what I'm arguing is that establishing the recognition of Kurno as an a, a UK constituent nation by the UK state materially increases its bargaining leverage. Importantly, however, of course, it does not mean you cannot do any, uh, you're, you cannot argue for other things while you wait for that recognition through the democratic means and structures available to you. You can still pursue action on the challenges you, you face, like you're doing today. Uh, those issues relating to housing, economic and social opportunity, planning, environmental protection, etc. And you can still build further to develop that Cornish civil society. And you're doing that today. But what I'm saying is if, if that effort is twinned with a fight for recognition of Kurno as constituent nation of the UK, it helps provide focus, momentum and direction in that, that parallel effort. That's all I've got to say. Uh, Muraz, Dioch, thank you. That no longer exists. We see the concentration of power while, whilst avoiding the scrutiny and responsibility that comes with that power. And haven't we seen that this year? It arises under the guise of respectability and pride that will then be refused to anyone who is deemed different, arrive in the normalisation of human cruelty. But the things we do in the name of economic growth, the warning signs, there for everyone to see, whether they admit it or not. I have to say, finishing off, I am genuinely astonished that there's anyone left in Cornwall or Wales who believes Westminster rule serves our best interests. That's why we need autonomy or independence for Cornwall, and we need it now. Turn over, Thank you very much, Mark.